State of Mankind, How Much Do You Know, Excerpts from How the Specter of Communism is Ruling Our World. 41. The communist evil specter is composed of the elemental force of hatred, and its theories are suffused with hate. It promotes class struggle and attributes the root of every problem to traditional social structures. It talks about the rich exploiting the poor in order to incite grudges and hatred against the rich and incite revolution and violence. With the expansion of communist movements, the manipulation, violence, and lies of the specter have become commonplace in the West and have filled society with hate and rancor. In addition to communist parties' widespread and explicit promotion of violence, various paramarxists have also, under the control of the communist evil specter, advocated violence. Saul Alinsky, favored by the left in the United States, was originally in a gang before joining the left and becoming a political leader. He denied being a communist, but his political ideology and approach to conflict is identical to that of communism. Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals is taken as a textbook by U.S. street movement advocates. Alinsky wrote that his book is specifically for the have-nots who adopt a Machiavellian view of the world and want to seize from the rich and give to the poor, and turn the United States into a communist country. Alinsky seems to emphasize gradual infiltration rather than a bloody revolution, but in fact, he is a fan of violence. He is simply more subtle about it. The Black Panther Party, a violent revolutionary group, has espoused Maoist beliefs and used the Maoist slogan political power grows out of the barrel of a gun. Alinsky first favored the ballot box, however, with guns perhaps to be put to use later. His approach is thus similar to that taken by the Chinese Communist Party, maintaining a low profile and then finally striking. One of his rules encourages radicals to use aggressive approaches to intimidate their opponents and eventually achieve the goal of disruption and destruction. David Horowitz, an author and former radical who has a deep understanding of Alinsky, said that Alinsky and his followers have no view of reforming the current system. They know very well that their goal is to thoroughly destroy it, and that they regard the process as a war. Therefore, they will try every possible means to attain their goal, deciding when to employ violence, what kind of violence to use, and what kind of lies to tell. In American society, some politicians and political operatives attack their enemies by unscrupulous means, like deception, personal attacks, and the like. Like communists, they also often resort to violence. A society with a greater tendency to violence will become less stable and more divided. These days, the relationship between the major left-wing party and the major right-wing party in the United States seems identical to the confrontation between the communist bloc and the free world during the Cold War. They are as incompatible as fire and water, due to irreconcilable differences. After the new president was elected in 2016, leftist extremists known as Antifa began engaging in violent disruption. Antifa activists locked onto their target, the new president's supporters and other conservatives, and went after them at rallies and elsewhere. Antifa activists stopped Trump supporters from making statements and even directly attacked them. In recent years, an influx of immigrants from the Middle East and Africa have brought many social problems to European countries. Due to political correctness, the leftist elite in these nations have scolded and verbally abused opponents of the current immigration policies. In June 2017, Steve Scalise, a member of the Republican Party in the House of Representatives Majority Whip, was shot and gravely wounded at baseball practice by a supporter of another party. A politician on the left even said he was glad that Scalise was shot. That official was soon removed from his post as a committee chairman at the state level of his party. Behind these violent conflicts are factors of the communist specter. It's not that everyone wants conflict, but it only takes a few core communist activists to stir things up. Under the influence of the communist specter, when certain parties and politicians are weak, they claim that they'll protect the rights of people and follow the regulations of a democratic society. But when they get power, they use all methods to suppress dissent and arbitrarily deprive others of their rights. In February 2017, during a Senate session in a western state in the United States, a Vietnamese-American state senator addressed the chamber to speak out against the praise afforded to Tom Hayden, a former radical and anti-Vietnam War activist who became a senator. However, her microphone was abruptly turned off, and she was forced out of the Senate chamber by deputies. If things keep going in this direction, the end result will be a communist autocracy. Communism has a terrible reputation in the West, so lies are the only way it can expand its influence. Communist and left-wing groups use slogans like freedom, progress, and the public interest as a pretext for winning public support. In fact, their goal is to carry out their plan of advancing socialism. 
Their tactics mirror the communist promises of heaven on earth. Some parties promote policies that are basically communist, but come packaged under another name. For instance, the establishment of a socialized healthcare system isn't called socialist, but instead people's health care, or they justify it as being based on public opinion. When they want to force employers to pay a minimum wage, they call it a living wage. All the while, Western governments get more powerful and intervene in people's lives more and more. Pro-communist politicians and interest groups make empty promises to get elected, something very similar to what communist parties did to win approval when they were just getting started. These politicians promise higher social welfare, or say that everyone will get a job and medical insurance. No one cares to talk about who will pay, or how the system will work out in the long term. They often don't even plan to fulfill their promises in the first place. Benito Bernal, a congressional candidate on the U.S. West Coast, formerly on the left side of politics, recently disclosed that a political party once built a political organization with members that included federal departmental secretaries, federal senators and congressmen, and state and city council members. He says that they came up with a 25-year plan to manipulate different levels of government in order to campaign for the future of the presidency. Bernal discovered that the organization claimed to dedicate its resources to help communities resolve problems such as gang violence, school dropouts, teenage pregnancy, illegal immigrants, and social injustice. But their goal was to have all these people rely on the government. Bernal described this as a system of slavery, and said, When I questioned people in the organization, they asked me three questions instead. First, if all the problems were solved, what would the next presidential candidate propose to help? Second, do you have any idea how much capital has come into our city to solve these problems? Third, do you know how many jobs are created to solve these problems? At the time, I wondered if these people were clearly telling me to profit from people's pain, gang violence, and children killing each other. Bernal said that if someone took the time to look at that party's voting record, they would realize that the party wanted people to be disappointed, suppressed, and impoverished, so that it could profit from their misfortune. This is why he later decided to leave the party. In the 2008 U.S. presidential election, the Association of Community Organizations for Reform Now, ACORN, a liberal group with 40 years of history, was found to have registered thousands of fraudulent voters. In 2009, the group was again involved in a nationwide scandal. In the name of upholding justice and fighting for low-income households, it received a large amount of government subsidies and federal bailout money, meant to be used to help those families with medical care and housing needs. Two investigators disguised as a prostitute and a pimp went to Acorn's offices in several major cities to seek advice on how to operate their business, while secretly videotaping the interviews. Their videos show Acorn employees advising them on how to operate a brothel with a phony company and identity, and showed them how to launder money, hide the cash, avoid investigation, lie to the police, and evade taxes. Though Acorn repeatedly defended itself, its reputation was devastated and its funding withdrawn, forcing it to shutter a year later. Many political pledges seem tempting on the surface, but once carried out, result in ruin for people's future. This is known as the Curley Effect, as studied by two Harvard professors. Forbes summarizes the Curley Effect thusly, a politician or a political party can achieve long-term dominance by tipping the balance of votes in their direction through the implementation of policies that strangle and stifle economic growth. Counterintuitively, making a city poorer leads to political success for the engineers of that impoverishment. Specifically, politicians use warped and redistributionist fiscal and tax policies, such as giving tax incentives to trade unions, government programs, and minority enterprises, while increasing taxes on other enterprises and the wealthy. The result is that the beneficiaries of those policies, including the poor, trade unions, and so on, become reliant on the politicians who favor them, and then support them in elections. These soap the rich and high tax policies are used to support governmental projects that encourages the wealthy and entrepreneurs, who don't want their money taken and squandered, to leave the city, with the result that the opponents of the policies are fewer. Such politicians then have a stable, long-term hold on that area, and can build their political machine. At the same time, the taxation and job opportunities in the city decrease year by year, and eventually the city goes bankrupt. The Forbes article points out that the influence of the Curley effect is widespread, affecting the top 10 poorest cities with a population of more than 250,000 in the United States. Today, one rich western state, which has been mostly controlled by politicians on the left, is facing the consequences of these policies. The left also changes the meaning of words. For example, 
for conservatives equality means, roughly speaking, having equal opportunities. In this way, people will be able to compete fairly, and a natural meritocracy is formed. For leftists, however, the term means equal outcomes, meaning that whether or not people work hard, they receive the same outcome as others who don't. Conservatives believe that tolerance is inclusive of different beliefs and opinions, when personal interests are harmed, people should be broad-minded and generous. The left often understands tolerance to mean tolerance of sin. Their understanding of freedom and justice differs quite markedly from the traditional concepts. Social engineering policies, like celebrating homosexuality, having men and women use the same bathroom, legalizing marijuana, and other policies that undermine human ethics are all dubbed progressive, as if they were somehow moral advancements. In reality, all these policies undermine the moral laws laid down by God for man. This is how the policies on the left wing of the political spectrum end up undermining morality. The communist evil specter uses this style of politics for its own ends. In the past, people believed that the United States was a truly free society and the last bastion against communism. But today, people see clearly that high taxation, a highly developed welfare state, collectivism, big government, social democracy, social equality, and the like, all derived in one way or another from socialist and Marxist-Leninist ideological DNA, are enshrined in policies and put into practice. In particular, the younger generation simply isn't aware of the history of brutality in communist countries. They yearn for and pursue an illusory ideal, and are deceived by the new guise that communism has taken on. The result is that they unknowingly walk on a road to ruin.